Hello and uh, welcome back to another video presentation from TrainingRight.com. Uh, we are continuing uh, learning QTP. This is the fourth video in that series uh, of learning QTP. And uh, in the previous videos, I have uh, shown you as how to record uh, a script um, using QTP. And uh, we, uh, after recording, we did uh, ran that, and then we looked into the possibilities of. Uh, um, the script not working if something gets changed into the object properties. Uh, so I showed you the object uh, repository and in the object repository we looked into um, how uh, these names which were given to the objects by QTP, um, how we, we went in there and then we used more like uh, user-friendly names. So we did change to user-friendly names and uh, uh, what we are going to do now is uh, we're going to talk about the possibility of uh, um, getting something back from the application. Meaning, uh, when I uh, run my script, I notice that uh, it's going to bring up eBay and then um, you are entering your whatever details you need to enter and then it is going to be clicking on that button. And once you click on that button, um, here what we have here is the results which are coming back from the from the application. Now, um, what I want to do is I want to capture these results. Now, uh, depending on what my query is or what I'm searching uh, for, it is going to return different results here. And um, just for the heck of it, I need to uh, capture those those results not for the heck of it, but I would like to do certain things with that results. I would like to uh, report back uh, to my team that when I did a query, when I searched eBay for a certain product, it did come back and then uh, with, with this many results. Um, what if my data is wrong? Rather than saying um, men's Nike shoes, I, I say something differently here. Uh, I say um, man's uh, Mikey shoes or something like that and uh, uh, this might not give me um, the expected results see it's giving me 79 I mean it's I guess it's it's trying hard it looks uh, for the word shoes and it interpret man's as men's and then still going to give me you know something uh, so, but this is not uh, the exact uh, number we are expecting so how do we know that my tests are running uh, good and it, it is um, getting me the right results or not? So I need to capture the results. Okay, if I need to capture the results, then um, what we got to do is uh, we got to know, first of all, where the results are being displayed. Like when I enter some information, I enter the information into into a web edit, right? Um, now, when the information is popping uh, back to us uh, from the application. Where are they showing? This is not a web edit. So where is it showing? What is this um, area, or what is this, uh, uh, this the the location, or what what is it actually? Is it an image, or is it is it uh, a web edit? Is it a button? What is it? Right. So we would like to find out what is this right uh, this object, and then uh, how do we capture something which is coming inside this object? All right. Okay. So for that, uh, we have to, first of all, add whatever this is into my object uh, repository. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, put it back to what it was. So uh, let's say it was uh, men's uh, uh, Nike shoes, right? Um, okay. And then when I run that, it is coming back with uh, 96,368, I guess. Okay. I need to... I need to capture this number. For that matter, if I if my script runs here with uh, a, a different text, so let me close this browser and then come back here and then do women's right. Um, and if I run this, let's see how many uh, we get back from the application. So it is going to put women's uh, Nike shoes in that uh, web element. Um, there it is. It is going to, and then when it does that, it is coming out as. 35,791. So I need to capture this information. I need to capture that. Okay, uh, for me to capture that, first of all, number one, I have to identify what is this, right? So the way I'm going to identify this is by adding this 
this object, whatever object that is, I don't know. So I'm going to add that to my object repository. So the, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to open up my object repository and uh, I am going to add um, that object to it. So the way I can add an object to an object repository is uh, when you, this is see that plus and add objects to local, I got to click on that. Once I click on that, it is going to show me my my browser, right? And uh, if it if we get into this situation, right? This is uh, now there is a reason uh, we we got into this situation where it is not showing me my eBay browser, right? And if I if I start clicking at some point, if I start clicking now, a wrong um, object will get added to my object repository. So uh, what what we should do is this recording is a very sensitive business. So when we are recording something, we we cannot afford to have these browsers, all the other browsers open, right? So before I started that, I should have closed my uh, my browsers. All right. So since I did not do that, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see that now this this is what it is trying to record. I, I, I am gonna cancel out of here because that's not what we because what what it did is when i when i clicked on that to bring up my browser it recorded that as some win object that's not the intention that's not what we want so since recording is a serious business what i got to do is uh if at all if there were any other browsers which were open i got to make sure that i close those browsers so this browser was open so i closed that and i'm just gonna uh, um, take a look if any of the browsers is open none of the browsers are open this is my uh my ebay browser here we are fine now so we need to capture this information so the way i'm going to be capturing this information again is i'm going to give it a shot here so i if let's say this was closed i would have gone into object um a repository and i look at the plus sign which is add objects to local so i'm going to click on that and uh <laughs> So I had another window open here. So I'm gonna just uh, shut that. Notice that it is it is trying to uh, add that window sketchpad to. So now you can see how sensitive it is, right? So I gotta make sure that I have everything closed before I do that. Uh, anyway, one more try. Um, just make sure that my browser is uh, up. My browser is up. It is here. Now I'm gonna make an attempt here. Okay, object repository right and i need to add this and i need to you know i did not close this right so let me just close that so um that was closed um uh my object uh okay it is here um add right uh holy moly so i think i need to just close that because it was not closed uh uh here it is i'm gonna try closing from here uh now it is closed uh uh, well, this this is getting a little bit uh, uh, cumbersome, is it not? Okay, so again, coming back in here, this is my brow uh, browser. Uh, one more attempt to add it. Uh, so this is my object repository. I need to add, and here we go. So I click on that, and it says that okay, this is what it is. This is what I'm going to add, and it says it's a web element right the object is a web element which is going it is going to add and uh it it thinks that it is 35 791 that's the that's the name the best name or the logical name it could come up uh um for that for that thing so I, i'm just gonna say okay to it right and this is going to add it uh into a page which is women's nike shoes ebay so it is going to add that so that's fine so so it got added in here so that's the name which it wants to give to that so 35791 that's that's the the best it could come up with so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just rename that right i'm going to rename that to something better and what is that something better this is the results which i'm getting from the application right so i can say that this is the results uh uh captured uh back from app right oh long name doesn't matter doesn't matter i mean you know i have i since i already did it before so that's that's what i i at that time i gave it a name like app results so 
I just want to be different now. So I, I'm saying results captured back from app, right? Okay, fine. So this is the name which we have given to that object. Okay, now, now that we have the object, uh, what we want to do is we want to see uh, what in that object, what is the value which we are getting out of that object, all right? That's what we want to capture. Okay, so for that, I have to talk to you a little bit about objects and their properties. So um, bear with me. Here we are. Let me just open my sketch pad and then, you know, draw something in here and then try and explain you um, so that you can understand what is an object and what is a property. Okay, now, um, let's say there are a bunch of people inside the room, right? Um, this guy, right? And this guy, right? And this guy, and this guy. Okay, now, these are, all of them are basically, all of them are objects, right? And what objects, let's say, human objects, right? Okay, now, if I, if I'm, I'm here, I need to, I need to call these, you know, one of, one of these guys. And, and so how can I, how can I call them so that they, they can, pay attention to me and I want to call one individual. If I say human, it, all four of them, they are going to respond, right? So if I say, I mean, human is, is basically all of these objects are human, but each object is better known by their properties, right? So properties like if I need to call this guy, he might be Jim. And this is John, and this is John, and this is Tim, right? And here, here I am, right? And I need to, I need to call Jim. When I say Jim, he's, he's going to respond. When I say Tim, he's going to respond. When I say John, both of them are going to, to respond. So, what is Jim, John, John, and Tim? These are nothing but these are properties, right? These are properties. Uh, uh, an object is identified by its property. What property is is the word or Jim? Jim is nothing but the name property. How else? Likewise, uh, John is the name property. This is also this John is also a name property and. Uh, Tim is the name property. Some of the properties are unique, meaning that, I mean, in this room, at least, there, there are no two Tims. In this room, there are no two Jim. So when it comes to this room, Jim as a name is unique, and Tim as a name is unique, but John is not. So if I need to have one of these Johns respond to me, I need to know another property of that. What could be another property? Can I say, uh, John, who has uh, two eyes. <laughs> so, uh, guess what? Both of them, they are going to respond, right? Um, so, th there should be some property which is kind of like unique property, right? So, how about if I say height? Uh, hey, John, who is uh, six feet, and hey, John, who is... Uh, um, hmm. I don't want to offend this John. So, <sighs> five feet, right? Okay, so he is six foot. So he's like a taller John or a longer John, right? And he is a shorter John. I mean, you know, it's it's not politically correct to call somebody as a shorter guy. Um, I mean, but anyways, I mean, you know, so, but this is, this is like uh, um, height is like another attribute or another property. Likewise, these are like four humans. Likewise, um, you have uh, properties for objects, right? So if I want to have uh, um, a property for an object, let's say, um, the if I have an object, and this is what we were talking about, let's say that there are there is a web web element object, right? There is this web element, there is this web element, and there is this web element right these are the objects so this web element 
and this and this must have some unique property let's say name right uh, or let's say some other properties right so there are so we need to find out i just told you the name right what are the other what are the other properties what are the other properties of uh, an object right and the objects what are the objects which we know so far um we know that browser is an object page is an object uh, web edit is an object web button uh, is an object and uh, just now i said web element is an object right so these are all the objects we know that objects they have objects have what properties and to give you the idea of one of the properties name is a property right when you have a property a property will have some value so if it is the name as a property it could be gym right if it is uh, height as a property it is six foot right so likewise i want to know what are the different what are the properties of objects and what are the values so how how can i find out how can i find out you know first of all uh, you know how can i find out you know what are the different properties of an object and what are their values okay let's see how to do that okay in order to do that we have to um this this is getting interesting here so we have to look into an an object so here is my object what object it is it's a browser object right what are the properties object properties what are the properties about this object which i know right so these are some of the properties right and then their values i don't see i don't see many here right i don't see many here correct right uh let's go and take a look into this page object right page object and in there i have something called i have something called what object is this the one which i click it's a web button what are the properties of that there is something called a type property there's something called a name property there is something called an html tag property and what are the values of that the the if it is name it is search right if it is type it is submit right so these are some of the uh, this is an object is web edit and these are the properties likewise let's see the object which we captured what kind of object is that so we just added this object right to our object repository by clicking this plus sign so let's see what is this object when i click on that it says that it's a web element object right and what are some of the properties of this there is something called an inner text property there is something called an html tag property now let's say if i want to find out the value of the inner text property so at this time when it gets when when it got recorded when it got recorded the value of that was 35791 right when it got recorded now sometimes um you know not sometimes but uh, you know depending on depending on what what we search this this object this object value this object is a web element right this object is a web element and uh, this 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 object this object we we put this object into the object repository by clicking that and then we gave it a name which is results captured and this is a web element object and this object some of the properties of that is inner text is one of the properties of that and the value when we when we put it inside the inside the object repository at that time the value of that was 35791 now when i'm running a different um string here when i'm searching for men's nike shoes or any string it doesn't matter it might give a different uh, value different value of what different value for the web element object and the property is inner text and the value could be different so now let's go and capture that in our script let's see how to do that okay for that what i'm going to do is i am going to 
close this and I am going to write I'm going to write uh, I am going to write some code in my QTP um, and let's see what that code is that code is I want to capture this value right I want to capture I want to capture this value what is this object this is the web element object I want to capture one of the properties I want to get I want to get one of the properties what is the property inner text property I want to get right so let's see how how I do that for that first of all this object any object is inside a browser so I will type b r o w s e r and then parenthesis and it will show me all the browsers I have here right so I'm gonna go and and take and I'm, I'm gonna go and take this 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 browser and I will do a dot and inside a browser I have a page I do a page and I will do a parenthesis and it gives me all the pages and I am on page two right this is not the page one this is page two I'm on page two so I'm gonna be selecting that page two right and in here I'm this is the web element object right so I'm gonna say web element it is selected for me I do a tab and that will be selected for me and in here I have I have this and that which one I want I want this right so I select that I select that and after I do that after I select let me just make some space so that you can see after that now I want this objects I want what I want this objects this object this objects I want the the property which property we want we want the property we want to read we want to read the runtime because this is the runtime right so I want to get I want to get the runtime object property so this is what I have to select I have to select the get RO property get RO is get runtime object property and which one I want I want the inner text I, I want the inner text so I'm gonna choose that okay this is what I want and so this is this it is going to read read this this inner text which is this number it is going to read or any number depending on my query right it could be M A N S man's Mikey shoes M I K E Mikey shoes and it will give you 17. So I want to capture that set. Whatever comes out here, I want to capture that. And this number is different based on what I enter here, right? So whatever comes out here, I want to capture. So the way I'm going to capture that is I'll say go to that browser, go to that page, go to that web element. So this web element and then get the RO property, get the read uh, or rather get the runtime. Um, uh, object property and which property the inner text and once it gets that where what do you want to do with that I want to let's say print that right so I say print print this right or I could store it someplace right now I just want to print it all right okay so this is what I want to do and so let me run it and this time I'm gonna totally ch um, take a uh, you know something different this is uh, um, rather than call uh, going for women's Nike shoes I will go for let's say uh, um, NASCAR uh, tickets <laughs> I don't even know if uh, uh, what it is going to return if at all if it is going to return anything or not but let's see so I close my browser right um, and uh, I will I will try this is from the previous one I will try to run this and see what comes up so here I am running for a totally totally different um, string right okay it did enter that and probably it is going to uh, click on that and there you go it found like 1458 and I need to I need to print that read that and print that now let's see if it is done it is still it is still running because it did not stop as long as you see that yellow thing in there that means that okay it is still doing something so I'm gonna wait till it finishes that and then it should 
mm, pop up uh, a number. If everything worked all right, it should open up a window, uh, print window. There you go. And here is my 1458. Here is my 1458. Here is my 1458. So what we have done is we ran a script. We, we executed that script onto the browser and we got some results from there and we captured those results back into our QTP application. From here, I might down the road uh, in my future videos, I'm going to show you as how to take this and write it either into a Excel spreadsheet or write it into a database, right? Uh, but this video so far um, shows you as how you could be reading anything uh, back into the application which is coming out from your application. So can I go and uh, change this query? I close this browser. Can I change the query to um, something? Uh, this could be uh, Chicago uh, Bulls. Um, um, let's say tickets, right? Uh, any query, right? Uh, okay, let's see if it runs. Um, here it is. I'm gonna run that. Uh, are they? Are there any? Any tickets out there available for this Chicago? Okay, it is watch here. It is there. It ran. Okay, it came back with 1,332, right? Now let's see what happens. Is it going to be captured and then shown? Uh, let's see. Uh, if it is going to be captured and shown, then it, it will be displayed into that uh, little window, which will come up, which is the print window. And if it is doing it, uh, then our test is successful. And uh, what we have learned in this video is uh, how to capture information from uh, an application or for that matter from any application. There you go. Here it is. Uh, well, so that's how we do it, folks. Um, what we uh, would be suggesting is, as usual, uh, as I've been telling you in every video, that uh, go and take a look into um, you know our website, which is uh, trainingright.com. Uh, again, there are a lot of free videos for you to uh, look at. Uh, you know, you could train yourself from those free videos, uh, or you could uh, enroll into a course and uh, be a part of the course. Uh, uh, here are some free videos on QTP. These are the free videos on the Selenium. Uh, these are some of the other free video for uh, manual testers. Uh, I'm talking about some databases. Uh, what is the need for you to know the architecture of an application? What is the need for you to know the databases, different types of databases and whatnot? So a lot of free videos in here. If you want to uh, learn the real stuff, uh, then uh, these are some of the different um, courses or the different um, classes which we are starting at the time of recording this video. Uh, we are starting a QTP class uh, on November 2nd of 2011. Um, but on this page, you would be seeing, if you come back to this page at, at a later date, you would notice that uh, here you would find the schedule for the next upcoming course uh, or the courses. All right. Um, thank you so much um, for being a part of this video, and uh, we hope to see you back again uh, on another video presentation. Thank you and take care. Bye. Hello, and uh, welcome back to another video presentation from trainingright.com. Uh, we are continuing uh, learning QTP. This is the fourth video in that series uh, of learning QTP. And uh, in the previous videos, I have uh, shown you as how to record uh, a script um, using QTP. And uh, we, uh, after recording, we did uh, ran that. And then we looked into the possibilities of uh, um, the script not working if something gets changed into the object properties. Uh, so I showed you the object uh, repo different results here and um, just for the heck of it I need to uh, capture those those results not for the heck of it but I would like to do certain things with that results I would like to uh, report back uh, to my team that when I did a query when I searched eBay for a certain product it did come back and then uh, with with this many results um, what if my data is wrong rather than saying um, men's Nike shoes, I, I say something differently here. Repository. And in the object repository, we looked into um, how uh, these names which were given to the objects by QTP, um, how we, we went in there and then we used more like uh, user-friendly names. So we did change to user-friendly names and uh, uh, what we are going to do now is uh, we're going to talk about the possibility of uh, um, getting something back from the application. 
meaning um, when I uh, run my script I notice that uh, it's gonna bring up eBay and then um, you are entering your whatever details you need to enter and then it is going to be clicking on that button and once you click on that button um, here what we have here is the results which are coming back from the from the application now um, what I want to do is I want to capture these results now uh, depending on what my query is or what I'm searching uh, for it is going to return uh, I say um, man's uh, Mikey shoes or something like that and uh, uh, this might not give me um, the expected results see it's giving me 79 I mean it's I guess it's it's trying hard it looks uh, for the word shoes and it interpret man's as men's and then still going to give me you know something uh, so, but this is not uh, the exact uh, number we are expecting so how do we know that my tests are running uh, good and it is uh, 